This year's annual World Economic Forum convening was a Davos disaster, to put it lightly. Now, the World Economic Forum is not a popular venture. The vast majority of the planet at this point understands the World Economic Forum to be merely a convening of the elite to give the virtue signal to the world public that they are, in fact, legitimate rulers. They come together. The richest people in the world come together. The biggest warmongers in the world, uh, a, a hodgepodge, especially of the collective West, all come together to discuss what they believe are the most important themes, topics, and issues of the day. The World Economic Forum has come under heavy fire for many reasons, not least uh, its commentary on the pandemic, but especially of late of being an engine of the U.S. foreign policy establishment, and in particular, the American empire and the collective West, which so slavishly, so slovenly uh, does the bidding of the U.S. empire. And it was no different this time around. But the spotlight, or at least the dim spotlight, was on Vladimir Zelensky. Vladimir Zelensky came to this year's World Economic Forum not with hope, not with encouragement and enthusiasm, and not with the same bluster that has characterized Zelensky's visits in prior meetings held by the masters of war. This time around, Vladimir Zelensky was singing a slightly different tune, and I want to put an emphasis on slightly. So Zelensky at the World Economic Forum calls for peace, not more weapons in Davos. This is from the New York Times. In a speech in Switzerland, the Ukrainian president asked for more sanctions on Moscow, but he did not appeal for weaponry for new offenses. I wonder why. Could it be that there is going to be no new offensives. They, they're, they're seemingly on the defense in a permanent way. So the New York Times said, with fights st fighting still raging in Ukraine in a front line that has barely shifted in more than a year, the country's president, Vladimir Zelensky, headed Tuesday to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, amid a swirl of dipl diplomatic discussions about possible peace talks. Mr. Zelensky, dressed in olive green pants and a black crew neck sweater, yes, he went to the World Economic Forum looking like this again. So he was in that garb and he was met with applause when he walked on stage with a room in a room packed with hundreds of people at the forum, high profile gatherings, a high profile gathering of business and financial elites. In his speech, he promoted a Ukrainian peace plan and called for stiffer sanctions on Russia. But in contrast with his comments to the forum last year, Zelensky made no direct appeals for weaponry for new offenses on the battlefield. He said, quote, we need you in Ukraine to build, to reconstruct, to restore lives. He told the audience of investors, each of you can be more successful with Ukraine. Zelensky highlighted his formulas, his country's plan to end the war, an initiative called the Peace Formula, which has gained the backing of dozens of countries, but those don't include Russia and Moscow has rejected its terms. Oh, I wonder why. Could it be that actually Russia isn't even invited to be part of the negotiations and that the demands on Russia are completely and wholly out of the question with regard to the actual situation on the battlefield? Oh, it could be something like that. It could have something to do with that. Russia signaled through informal envoys that Vladimir Putin is now open to ceasefire talks, but Ukrainian officials have said they will reject any temporary truce that comes separate from a broader settlement, lest Russia merely use the pause to regroup and attack again. Pure projection from the New York Times, since this is exactly what happened during the Minsk Accords, not a decade ago. Russia, Mr. Zelensky said, has become an agent of chaos in the world, sowing instability in African nations, Syria and Ukraine through military invention, interventions that attempt uh, at negotiations have failed to slow. A ceasefire in the long-running war in Ukraine did not stop the full-scale evasion of 2022, he said. Well, that's because of his masters. That's because of Zelensky's masters. So this is, again, while, and I want to say, he was not begging for weapons, 
he was indeed repeating what, of course, the those at this event wanted to hear. They wanted to hear Putin is an evil man. Putin is bad. And Zelensky had to be basically the standard bearer of this message and promote a plan which calls for full Russian withdrawal from all territory, including Crimea. Ipso facto, this is a ridiculous plan. They were wasting all of their time. But it wasn't all wasted time here because while Zelensky was changing his tune to a certain degree, it is quite clear who Zelensky was actually serving at Davos. Dav D Diamond, Jamie Diamond tells Zelensky, God bless you in Davos's face to face. Ukrainian leader met with CEOs and pushing for renewed funding. Kiev reached out as global aid held up by infighting. So here he is shaking hands with Jamie Dimon, one of the chief swindlers and plunderers of the entire planet, the uh, uh, well-known J.P. Morgan uh, chief. He also met with Blackstone Inc. Steve Schwartzman and Bridgewater founder Ray Diallo on that morning in Davos. On Tuesday, his mission replenished the state coffers and divert attention back to a conflict at Europe's doors. Diamond introduced himself to Zelensky. I'm Jamie Diamond from J.P. Morgan Chase. God bless you. So big business leaders obviously have their eyes set on Ukraine, the richest, most oligarchic factions and elites that this planet has to offer have very cheery and very warm regard for Mr. Zelensky. And that's because Zelensky is their pawn. And so Zelensky's hope was that he could go to Davos and he could uh, essentially scratch their backs. And then they would be the ones putting pressure on who they control, which is the politicians in Washington. It's the politicians in Europe that they control them. So that will then lead to what Zelensky wants, which is a lot more money for Ukraine so that the war can continue in a protracted way manner. So while the New York Times was saying that Zelensky was changing his tune to a certain degree, it was the Associated Press which said something a little different. They said Zelensky lashes out at Putin and presses allies to boost Ukraine's fight. So at the World Econo Economic Forum annual meeting in Davos, Vladimir Zelensky came out swinging, urging political and business leaders facing war fatigue in the West to enforce sanctions, help rebuild his country, and advance the peace process. See, this is the exact same message from the New York Times with a different spin. Came out swinging rather than, as the New York Times put it, he came out with a lot less enthusiasm and a lot fewer demands than he had in the past. He's trying to keep his country, Zelensky is, um, to keep his country's long and largely stalemated defense against Russia on the minds of political leaders as Israel's war with uh, Hamas which passed the 100 day mark this week, siphons off much of the world's attention and has sparked concerns about wider conflict in the Middle East. He sought to center Ukraine as a pillar in the defense of democracies. Anyone thinks this is only about us, this is only about Ukraine, are fundamentally mistaken. Putin embodies war, he said, lashing out the Kremlin leader for leveling cities and imposing the terrifying feeling that the war may never end. He also offered criticism for a world that told him not to worsen tensions ahead of Russia's full-scale invasion of 2022. After February 24th, nothing harmed our coalition more than this concept. Every don't escalate to us sounded like you will prevail, Putin. So, I mean, this is classic Zelensky. Zelensky cannot help but uh, essentially do, uh, this is embarrassing. He, and I'm going to show you, it gets even worse from here. But he met with Secretary of State Antony Blinken and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, um, and who said that Washington is determined to keep supporting Ukraine and working very closely with Congress to do that. But guess what? Zelensky, Blinken, and Sullivan, you haven't gotten what you wanted, and it's likely never to come because uh, Ukraine at this point is a doomed project. It is doomed to fail. But Zelensky, on the one hand, wasn't begging his masters for weapons, and on the other, he was lashing out in a completely an entirely different way, a way that we've seen before, but I don't believe at this forum we 
have gotten the attention on this that it deserves. So the World Economic Forum is usually focused on Klaus Schwab. It's usually focused on Bill Gates. It's usually focused on these, basically the masterminds of capital, these huge capitalists, corporatists, oligarchs who have so much wealth and so much influence over policy that their mere presence overshadows this behavior by Zelensky. <laughs> this behavior by Zelensky was truly unhinged. And it just goes to show that no matter how rich you are, no matter how much control you think you have over your pawns and puppets, that these pawns and puppets often go off script, especially when your script has become absolutely illegitimate. It's become stale. It's become dry. Nobody wants to play the game of endless war in Ukraine anymore. So here comes Zelensky first threatening Putin's grandchildren. He got personal in his speech at Davos's World Economic Forum. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky threatened Russian President Vladimir Putin's entire family with criminal trials and long prison sentences, he said in his speech at Davos on Tuesday, the World Economic Forum. Zelensky's address to the gathering of aspiring global leaders focused on asking for more weapons, money, and ammunition so he could continue to fight Russia. At one point, however, he made a reference to the Russian leaders' family. Putin will not, quote, rest in peace both in his, this world and the next, end quote, neither his children nor his grandchildren, end quote. So this is, this essentially exposes the barbarity of Zelensky. And he was willing in front of all of his masters to expose himself in this way. This is not the kind of talk that even Antony Blinken, even the United States, even uh, the figures in the collective West would go so far uh, uh, down the path. Of course, Putin evil, Putin evil. But to uh, go after family, to go after that so-called sacred institution that supposedly the collective West uh, uh, cherishes so much, that's another story. That is, <laughs> you, uh, while the United States uh, did kill, for example, Muammar Gaddafi's children, that, that did happen. Um, that happened before Gaddafi died uh, uh, in the 1980s, thanks to Ronald Reagan. Um, not all of his children, but uh, he did kill several of his family members. Never would you hear, well, we're going to, your grandchildren, your children will essentially rot in the down under. That is not really the etiquette of the empire, no matter how disgustingly cruel and unusual it can be. But not only this, Zelensky just showed over and over again how desperate this situation is for him and for Ukraine. So Vladimir Zelensky, all the talk is always on the West at the World Economic Forum. What is the West doing? What is, are these elites doing? What is the United States' representatives, Europe's representatives, what are they doing? But when Zelensky did this, this made my jaw drop. Chinese PM is not on my level. Zelensky said he wants to meet with decision makers only. So at Davos on Wednesday, the next day at the World Economic Forum, he told reporters he actually sought not to meet with Chinese Premier Li Cheng at the World Economic Forum gathering in Davos. The remarks come amid reports that China's top official shot down Zelensky's request for a meeting at the event. The premier is not the person calling the shots in China, Zelensky asserted, suggesting Li was not sufficiently high-ranking to justify a meeting. So context, Politico initially reported that Li Qiang had wanted nothing to do with Zelensky. I mean, this is the theme for China uh, throughout this conflict, wanting nothing to do with Zelensky. Why? Well, Zelensky is not viewed. Zelensky is, of course, viewed by the United Nations and uh, by the world, right? It's, uh, so by international law, as the legitimate government. But in practice, that's, that's, the, that's the rules. But in practice, China doesn't see Zelensky as a legitimate leader. China sees Zelensky like most of the world sees Zelensky as nothing but a pawn. So Zelensky said there is a Chinese premier 
Then our prime minister will meet with him. I would love to meet with the leader of China. As far as I know, China's Xi Jinping makes decisions in Ukraine. And in Ukraine, I make decisions. I don't need just any dialogue. I need important decisions from the leaders who make these decisions. Earlier that day, Politico reported that China has ruled out any diplomatic encounters with Ukraine and Davos altogether at Russia's behest. Beijing rejected Kiev's request for a meeting visiting at some point during their mutual Swiss visits, said a senior U.S. anonymous official. Um Ukraine said that no meeting was ever scheduled to begin with, but here's the thing. Li Qiang is the second most powerful person in China's government. He is the leader of the state council. President Xi Jinping was never going to Davos. He wasn't going to meet with uh, Vladimir Zelensky in Davos. That wasn't ever in the cards. So the fact that this media report, which who knows, who can verify its credibility, Politico and all of the Western mainstream media, let's be honest, reports a lot. They talk a lot and they report on a lot of anonymous U.S. official information, information that cannot necessarily be verified. So whether it's true or whether it's not, the fact that Zelensky felt triggered enough to insult the second in line in China, Li Qiang, of the state council, which is the executive body of the highest political organ in China, the National People's Congress. The state council is what carries out policy decisions. The fact that Zelensky felt himself too big to meet with someone like Li Qiang exposes just how, not only how bankrupt he is, but how he has absolutely not just lost the plot, he's lost the war. And it was never really Zelensky's to win in the first place. But as with all things, karma is a you know what. <laughs> and Bloomberg reported very shortly thereafter on January 18th. That would be this moment today. If you're watching it now, if you're watching the playback or clip, um, it is uh, probably several days after. But Ukraine seeks to organize a call with China's Xi to push a leaders summit. So all that bravado, all that bravado being too big for Li Qiang, now Ukraine is showing its cards and saying, well, actually, no, we actually really do value China. And not only that, but we're so desperate about the state of this conflict that we are going to beg China on our hands and knees to be a mediator in a conflict that, yes, Ukraine has lost. So Bloomberg says Ukraine's top diplomat said Kiev is seeking to organize a call with Chinese President Xi Jinping as the war battered nation plans a leader summit to push forward its blueprint for peace. Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuebla, attending the World Economic Forum in Davos, said the government is pushing for a direct channel between Xi and Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. There are things they can talk about, Kuebla said in an interview with Bloomberg Television on Thursday. Zelensky's peace formula is a way to restore lasting and just peace to Ukraine. So let's just be quite honest here. There's going to be zero conversation between Xi Jinping and Vladimir Zelensky about this peace plan because this peace plan completely contradicts the interests in security the security interests and really the respect and dignity of Russia and China would never talk and speak about any kind of plan that would hurt its any of its allies, let alone its biggest in Russia. That is not how China does diplomacy. China will not be mediating, especially without Russia, a plan that absolutely has no benefit to Russia. China is not stupid. <laughs> China is not stupid. Um Ukrainian leadership, that's another story. So China's call for negotiations toward peace but maintained its ties with Russia, declining, declining to condemn President Vladimir Putin of Russia and his invasion. She and Zelensky have spoken just once since the invasion began almost two years ago in April 2023 when she said talks are the only viable way out of the Ukraine crisis. So Zelensky said at the forum he plans for a high-level meeting in Switzerland later this year to move forward with Ukraine's peace initiative, which insists Russian forces withdraw completely from Ukrainian territory. Security officials of more than 80 nations met in Davos Sunday, discussed the blueprint, but the meeting ended with no clear path forward. So Ukraine is coming on its hands and knees to China, as the collective West has from the very beginning of this conflict, 
to say, hey, can you please support, please, pretty please support this absolutely bankrupt peace plan? That's a waste of time and can't be called any such thing. It can't be called a peace plan if it is calling for essentially a war on everything that Russia has gained, not just in this conflict, but politically, diplomatic and mil- diplomatically and militarily over the last decade. Absolutely not. Since the Maidan coup, Russia would never make any such concessions and China would never waste its time on a peace plan that asks for concessions that are not viable. So Vladimir Zelensky made a huge fool out of himself at this uh, uh, World Economic Forum meeting. And world, the World Economic Forum is usually filled with enthusiasm. It's usually filled with hubris, the hubris of the elites coming together to talk about absolutely how they have these grand plans to make the world better when in fact they're going to make our lives a lot worse. Their grand plans to get rid of everything, get rid of so-called property, get uh, institute full AI, uh, address climate change and all of these things. But this year, those issues were overshadowed. And even the Financial Times had to say it. They said geopolitical risks overshadow economic optimism in Davos. Discussions at the World Economic Forum focus on wars in Gaza and Ukraine and the prospect of another Trump presidency. So even the Financial Times, even the Financial Times is admitting that there are political headwinds going on, that Donald Trump's potential victory is going to cause big problems, that there's anxiety in the global economy. And here you have uh, 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 the United States only growing 2.1% in 2023. And they say that's optimistic because that's double the rate it was predicted a year earlier. So you have an instance after instance. They're saying this is enthusiastic. I'm pointing this out as hugely troubling. But you had Ukraine. You had Gaza. You had so many issues. The Red Sea crisis coming up. Essentially, what the Financial Times had said in this article and its report, that these geopolitical risks far outweigh whatever the elites have to say about anything else because they have put themselves in essentially the quagmire of a century. It is historically unprecedented what is going on. You have NATO absolutely bogged down in Ukraine. You have the United States and Israel bogged down in West Asia on the Red Sea. You have the United States having to cool tensions with China in at least a rhetorical and an optical manner, while at the same time plotting and planning for a broader war with China that it knows it not only cannot win, that it can't even ignite right now, lest it finds itself tied up on three different fronts of major military conflict. So Zelensky's embarrassment at the World Economic Forum, the World Economic Forum itself was an embarrassment. It was a disaster. It offered no enthusiasm. It offered no hope. What it did was only solidify people's understanding, the vast majority of people's understanding of the World Economic Forum as an engine of the global elite. It's their engine to come together to assert their dominance and their power over the vast majority of people, and they are exposed in a major way when it comes to the quagmire of a century that they have put themselves in. And Zelensky, what better example? Clown show Zelensky, what Pepe Escobar calls the sweaty sweatshirt. What better example than he to demonstrate what state this is? empire, what state the World Economic Forum, what state the elite really is in. They are crumbling. They are in a state of chaos. And it's important to point that out because it's going to fall on us hard, but it's also going to fall on us to be responsible and step up to the plate and do our part to make sure that uh, we get one more step closer to not only ending the war in Ukraine, not only Uh, calling for peace, not only getting a ceasefire in Gaza, but also to unseating these vile 
vipers that uh, occupy not just the halls of Washington, not just the halls of the World Economic Forum, the boardrooms and uh, uh, the arenas of power that dictate life as we know it.